My people, welcome back to your favorite You and I talk show in the house. Today, we have a great talent. I have a great sexy dress on me. Like, what else do you want, my people? <laughs> We're back this week, David Lloyd in the house. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I yeah, appreciate it. great talent. I saw a lot of your videos and, mm -hmm. and pictures. Mm -hmm. You're so busy as well. Very busy right now. It's a very busy time in Vancouver and uh, it's a blessing. And um, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Nice. How did you get started? And then I read that uh, you actually come from a family that are preachers. Mm, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like um, my start was, uh, was predetermined for me in that sense of, of speaking to the public and speaking to the people. Mm -hmm. um, I do come from a family of preachers and public service uh, coming from Jamaica and in London, the UK as well. Um, so it was kind of, you know, I took it a different path in terms of the arts and entertainment, but um, I like to look at it as, you know, the same kind of thing, you know, talking to the people and, and projecting those messages out there. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. So when you were growing up, were you under obligation to go to church? That is actually the perfect way to describe it. It's <laughs> <laughs> under obligation. Yes. It was not the choice uh -huh. and it was not an option. Um, it was, you know, scheduled and... Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I thank my parents for that. I, I learned a lot um, my early years in church, and uh, that's actually where I also got time to be creative as well. Because um, when the pastors would be speaking and running on and on and on, um, I would either fall asleep or start my doodles or start writing stuff. So <laughs> after we got the first message, you know, the morning announcements, I would, I would uh, go into the creative world and and indulge myself. So yeah, that's where uh -huh. it all started for me. It would like church. kind of inspire you, like what else could I do with my life apart from, you know, praying? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, because the thing is, um, in church, is, it's all about stories, right? It's all about connecting stories from today, from yesteryear, and bringing it all together for the people, right? So um, to me, a lot of those stories, some, some of them I couldn't connect to at a young age, so I would travel in my imagination and create my own stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so how were your parents, uh, how did they react when you said, oh, actually, you know what, I, I want to go to Hollywood, you know, I want to be an <laughs> entertainer, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to be a preacher, you know? Like, um, how did they take that? Well, they always knew it was a goal of mine. Um, through, throughout uh, the various stages of my life, they always knew it was a goal of mine um, for many different reasons, you know, be at, being at family functions and entertaining the family or getting into different characters. And um, it wasn't something that uh, I wanted to pursue at a young age. I wanted to go out and just live life and have those life experiences. So when I do get in front of the camera, then I'll be able to portray those experiences correctly you know uh -huh. yeah so so uh, i also read that one of your first experiences mm -hmm. was uh getting hired as an impersonator someone who looks like uh p diddy yes yeah <laughs> you do look like p diddy oh, you look like his younger <laughs> brother you know <laughs> well you know he's uh that's, that's a great compliment do you ever use uh your p diddy look with uh, people who may not necessarily know like show up at somewhere and be like well you know i'm p diddy so. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done that. I mean, uh, I've been blessed to be able to enjoy uh, great friends and great times out and celebration. And, you know, I'm not going to lie. There has been times where, you know, my shirt has flown off and my, my chain is hanging out and I might have a bottle in my hand. But, you know, it's all in the good spirits of celebrating and, you know, hip hop and, and P. Diddy and these guys who, who uh, paved the way for that kind of lifestyle. So, yeah, that's. You know, I think it's all, all a good thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how did it all happen? And is it something that you enjoy or is it something that, you know, you, you're an actor, you would do any kind of role? Um, 
I, th I think with acting, I haven't got to that place yet where I feel like I've been typecast. And I think that's a blessing because I get the opportunities to read for all types of roles. Um, and yeah, I think, it's, I think it's a great thing. Like I don't get to go out for the stereotypical stuff that you may think someone in my demographic may go out for. Um, so I think, you know, it's an, it's an amazing thing. I'm not put in that box yet, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you're also writing and mm -hmm. producing your yeah. own stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, how is it and why is it that you care about writing and producing your own stuff as well? Well, technically, I wouldn't call myself a writer uh -huh. or a producer. Technically, I would call myself a creator. Oh. Yeah, nice. that's, that's the position that I take on in a production. Um, I'm currently in post-production for uh, an indie feature film called Meridium. Um, our story consultant is John Pavel, who was one of the writers of the original Total Recall. So um, I met him working on a set and I was telling him about my project and he, um, I sent him an email hoping to get some feedback on the script and everything like that and he actually sent me back uh, about eight pages worth of notes. And I was like, wow, like I thought he was just gonna be like, you know, send a couple sentences and be like, okay, get out of here, kid, like, you know? <laughs> and um, he actually, you know, gave me a lot of useful feedback for the project. And so um, we worked it out where he can come on board as a consulting producer. And um, I've been in post-production for that uh, for a little bit, but we're, we're kind of, you know, really crafting it to be something that's revolutionary and something that's a game changer. Um, in this genre. So, yeah, we had a lot of great cast and, and great crew on the project. And, um, um, yeah, I'll come back when, when I release it. <laughs> you will, you will. Yeah. You know what, I think we're going to take a short break. Mm -hmm. And then also I'm going to ask you a few more questions about it because okay. it's such a fascinating uh, project. You yeah. know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go for a short break. <laughs> You and I talk show with Louise Uachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at uachu.com to be a guest on the show. All right, my people, thank you so much for being here. David, thank you for being here. Yeah. So, the Meridian Project, mm -hmm. you always hear people like, working on set or meeting people accidentally. Mm -hmm. So do you think that it was an accident that you met this person and you ended up working with him? Or do you think like the whole universe was, uh, you know yeah, how they I say the think, universe is conspiring? <laughs> yes, to help us uh, finish this project and to, to, to attract the right people. I, th I definitely believe in the law of attraction and I believe that's how it works. I mean, um, any position that I needed at the time when I needed it, you know, I'd write it down and put it on paper and, and visualize about it. And then, you know, within a week or two, that person or those persons would, would show up in my life. And then they jump on board the project. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you, if, you know, you truly have to believe in what you're doing and I think that's why I prefer to call myself a creator in that sense instead of a writer and producer because I'm creating that vision out there and then, you know, I hand it to our writer who was uh, Gemma Holdway. She works on a lot of um, these uh, Hollywood shows uh, in town and she was the official writer for the show. So we would sit down and have meetings and then I would hand it to her and she would go finish off the script and then, you know, that's how it kind of worked and John would help with that as well. So. I believe, yeah, that's, you know, it's definitely a great thing. Yeah. yeah, and also that's a great thing because as an actor, maybe mm -hmm. you don't have to wait for other people to write scripts for mm -hmm. you. You can sort of create your own project. Mm -hmm. Do you find, like, how do you find the work that has to go into it when you're creating the project mm -hmm. versus when you're receiving the script from other people? Well, you know what? That's an interesting question, and I think that the work is very similar because when I get an audition in and, you know, it's uh, eight pages for some lead role to some network show or something like that, and you have to research, you know, the, the producers and the directors and um, the other cast members, if other people are attached at that point, to try to find um, what they're going for. 
And then that's not even talking about the character, right? So then you go into the character and, you know, you read through the script a bunch of times and you have to, you know, do all your homework in that sense, right? So I think it's, um, uh, it's, it's a huge thing. So it's the same thing when you're creating a project that you want to do all that same work for your own characters because, you know, you got to keep the level at a, at, a, at a high standard, you know? And you don't want characters to be one note. You want them to be three-dimensional. You want them to have backstories. You want them to be able to relate to the characters but still have contrast, right? Because that's what drama is. It's always that kind of conflict or whatever, right? So, yeah, it's important to, um, to do that in, in both of those realms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So of all the things that you have done, because you have so many projects, Psych Patient too, you know, Bobby D as yourself. Bobby D, yeah, <laughs> oh, as myself. <laughs> Actually, that's playing on Netflix right now. And that's, it is? Uh, that's a really cool project that, um, that I tell a lot of people about because I got the chance to work with uh, Alexa Vega, who was I used to watch in, in Spy Kids. She was one of the, the main uh, actors in Spy Kids. And so I got to work with her on that project, and yeah, it was it was amazing, you know. Very nice. Yeah. And so you are also from Toronto, yes. originally, originally. You from you know yeah. Toronto. How was the move to Vancouver, and how mm. is it being in Vancouver? There's mm. no Jamaicans in Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think. Well, I'm, I was born in Toronto, mm -hmm. then I was raised in Hamilton, and then I moved back to Toronto before I came here. And to be honest, I brought. Uh, a lot of my friends with me. I brought oh. my brother with me. I brought a couple of my friends with me. So I have like my own kind of team here. And uh, a lot of them are Jamaican. Some of them aren't. But, um, you know, it, the move was, 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 was great. You know, I had a friend that was living here. And uh, he really helped me get acclimated in Vancouver and finding, you know, the right places to kind of hang out and meet the right people. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's been amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you find it necessary mm -hmm. to absolutely move from the East Coast to the West Coast? No, I don't think it's absolutely necessary. I think there's a lot of benefits to being, um, you know, similar to actors who are in uh, Los Angeles or New York, right? It's like the grass is always greener. You know, you're in Vancouver, you're in Toronto, you're in L.A., you're in New York. People always have something to complain about, right? <laughs> but at the end of the day, you know, the... Um, you know, the, you, the, you have to go where the work is or where you fit in. Some people may fit in better on the east. Some people may fit in better on the west. But, you know, it's just one of those things. Me, personally, I want to work everywhere. Mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm. So that's where I'm heading towards is, you know. Definitely. Yeah. And then uh, when we come back shortly, we're going to go for a break. But mm -hmm. when we come back, I'm going to ask you, like, mm -hmm. if you ever planning on going to Jamaica for a project okay, and yeah. how that is mm -hmm. when you're taping there versus mm -hmm. when you're doing things over here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> All right, my people. You and I talk show with Louise Uachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at uachu.com to be a guest on the show. All right, my people, thank you so much for being back. David, so working in Europe, you're also European. Yes, I do have... Uh UK citizenship, which mm. gives me uh, the UK citizenship, mm. for now, at least. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See how that pans out, but for now, uh, yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah, yeah, and then also Jamaican by origin and culture, yeah. and yeah. now living in Canada. Yeah. So those three connections, yeah. and then working in all those areas, how mm. do you find it? Um, I find it interesting, you know, because I grew up in a very multicultural society, you know, Toronto, Hamilton, Ontario is one of the most multicultural places in the world. So from my kindergarten class, I was with everybody. Like, it was literally the united colors of Benetton in my kindergarten class. Like, you know, name a country, yeah. and the kid was from that country, right? So it was, it was great, you know, being in Canada and being able to learn about different cultures at a young age and then having those influences in my own family as well. So, um, but you see it a lot with um, guys like Drake in music, you know, where they're implementing all these different cultural things. And, 
you know, my goal is just to do that through film, you know, so that's where I'm headed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very nice. And then I've seen you also in uh, Top Dog Underdog. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you get a chance to come and see that? That's no, awesome. I didn't get a chance to come and oh, see you live, yeah. but I saw like mm -hmm. footages of it. Nice. And nice. I was like, how did this come about? You know? Wow. That was just, um, that was an amazing opportunity. Um, and that was just another audition. Uh, it was put on by a company called Seven Tyrants Theater, and it was the West Coast premiere of the play. And um, it's a Pulitzer Prize winning play by a lady named Susan Laurie Parks. The original play had Don Cheadle and Jeffrey Wright in it out of New York. And um, it's just a great uh, play. It's a two-hander about two brothers who are um, living in an un uh, unnamed city but um, they get into all types of hijinks and drama, and I won't go into it, but it's a classic kind of brother versus brother tale, you know? And um, 126 pages between two actors, so you can imagine the kind of work that had to go in for us, and um, yeah. Like how, how much was the preparation? How much did you have to rehearse it? Because when you're doing theater, yeah. it's so, like, you cannot make any mistakes. No. You, you know? <laughs> Well, if you do, you just got to hide them really yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> but um, the rehearsal process was actually pretty short. It was only about three and a half weeks. And um, when I first got the script, I was like, what did I sign up for? Like, I had no idea. And I was like, how could anybody actually remember this stuff? But, you know, you, you apply yourself and you do the work and, um, you know, you just give it your best shot. And it, and it turned out to be really good. We had a lot of good reviews. We had um, Christopher Gaze from Bart on the Beach come, and he was sitting front row, and he was like this the whole time, you know? <laughs> he was so engaged, and he had some great things to say um, about our performances after. So, yeah, it was a great experience. Yeah. yeah. So what are the tips for young actors in order to memorize their lines? Like, do you have a system, you know? I have a bunch of systems for <laughs> memorizing lines. <laughs> <laughs> I need them all. Like yeah. if, um, yeah, if there's any any more out there, yeah. anybody's got any more, <laughs> please send it to me. Um, yeah. But yeah, you know, it's just repetition, 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 you know, just read it, just find ways to connect to the material. And um, yeah, that's all you can do, you know, just try to lock it in your brain to where it's second nature, you know. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be on stage or in a scene and, and thinking about, you know, your lines. You don't, you want those things to come naturally, you know. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the best ways to do it is just to, just to keep on reading it. Read as much as you can. Mm -hmm. And how is the pressure when you know that Don Cheater and, uh, and another great actor have mm -hmm. played it. Yeah. I mean, do you watch their performance and then you go to yours or you like, I don't, I don't even want to watch it because I don't want it to influence me. Like the pressure mm -hmm. of doing something that somebody else has done. Mm -hmm. Like how did you take that and how did you deal with that? Well, I think that in theater versus film, there's more times and not an actor is going to play the same role. So we did watch um, some documentary footage um, about their performances and whatnot. And um, no, it doesn't really affect me because at the end of the day, you know, you have to connect with the words on the page and then make them real for yourself. You know what I mean? So you have to f draw on your own experiences and your own connections within the script to bring that to life through you. So I don't mind watching other people, even if it's the same kind of role, like it doesn't really affect me. Some At least, people say that, that it kills you. their performance. Like if they watch somebody mm -hmm. else do it, then right. it's going to mess up with their own performance. Right. And yeah, they're I mean, going to maybe try to copy or imitate them a bit. Yeah, the <laughs> thing is, I mean, I always allowed myself as a youth, like, we, you know, we go back to the story about, you know, um, watching um, preachers on the pulpit or watching movies growing up and knowing that I was going to get into the industry and be an actor. But I would just allow myself to enjoy the performances as they were, instead of trying to copy what the performer was doing on the screen, say it's Jim Carrey or Wesley Snipes or Al Pacino, whoever it is. I just really, you know, tried to sit back and enjoy what they were doing instead of 
allowing the performance to affect me to the point where I'm copying them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Very nice. That's the part where you're very creative. Mm -hmm. So you kind of create your own version of it. Exactly. All yeah. right. Yeah. We're going to take a short break and then we're going to come back and, and close up. Awesome. <laughs> you and I talk show with Louise Uachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at watcher.com to be a guest on the show. <clears throat> all right, my people, thank you for being here. David, so you've also been in commercials. Yes. You've also done sexy things. <laughs> 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 well, sexy is a matter of one's opinion, but I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> uh -huh. What is like your favorite projects to work on? Um, I think my favorite project has yet to come. Mm -hmm. Honestly, we sent out some self-tapes uh, in the past couple of days to L.A. And these are, um, I can't talk about it, but pilots that are with some great comedians that are out there out of New York. One of the projects is, and it's shooting in Toronto. And uh, another one that I booked is shooting here. Um, and the lead actress is somebody that I've looked up to for, for a while now. And I'm going to get the chance to work with her. So, you know, it's... Uh, it's one of those things where you just got to, you know, keep going. And I, don't, I try not to think about those things, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Is there, like, big actors mm -hmm. in the industry who have really influenced you? And you, when you were growing up, you were like, that guy. Right. That guy is just me in another body. I want to be that <laughs> guy. <laughs> um, well, you know, like anybody else, I like, you know, the big names like the De Niro's and Denzel Washington's. Um, who else? Uh, Eddie Murphy. You know, these guys are iconic uh, guys in the industry, right? So, of course, I can sit back and enjoy their work and would love to engage in projects like they have. And that's what I'm, you know, trying to do right now with my own projects, right? And get to that point where I can be on an icon iconic level as well, you know, in the future. Yes, yeah. definitely. I love your voice, too. I think mm -hmm. you also have that voice which makes somebody last. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes, that's good. Because the voice is like an additional mm -hmm. tool, you know? Right. Yes, for sure. So young people who are looking up to you mm -hmm. or young people who are struggling and they are trying to also be into film, go mm -hmm. into acting and do the theater thing, mm -hmm. what would be your advice to them? My advice to young people. Well, first and foremost... First of all, you're not old. I'm not saying that you're not old. No, yeah, old. yeah. No, I get what you're saying. You're saying yeah. But young in the game. <laughs> Young in the game, you know, just um, I think you got to study the greats. I think you do got to study, you know, I have a lot of friends that have high aspirations and then we have conversations, you know, similar to this. And you say, oh, have you seen, you know, the directors and whatnot? Have you seen, um, you know, Tarantino's work or, you know, um, Scorsese and, you know, this kind of thing. They talk about projects they don't want to make. And I say, well, have you seen that project? It's like exactly what you just described. <laughs> like it's already out there, you know? So I think that as a young person, you kind of got to, you know, study and study as much as you can and see what's out there and then try to find your own path. You know what I mean? Try to be a little bit original. Yeah. Because it's, be it's, it's, it's so yeah. hard. There's so yeah. much stuff out there. There's so much content out there and there's so much that has already been done um, that they say nothing is new under the sun. But, um, you know. It doesn't hurt to try, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what would be like some of the mistakes that you have made mm -hmm. that you would want to tell people coming up, be like, yo, don't be like me, don't do that. Well, uh, I don't like, know if we have enough time for that or <laughs> these things can be repeated on camera, to be honest. <laughs> so, um, let me think. One thing I would say, we recently, um, my agent and I, were going through a process where we, last pilot season, we were reading for a bunch of CBC pilots, NBC pilots, all this kind of stuff. And we were unsuccessful in booking any of them, but the feedback was great. And so with that feedback, we tried to pitch different markets based on what we were getting back. But the thing is, is that those markets were not necessarily aware of the work that I had been doing or had done. So we found some resistance within those pitches. Do you know what I mean? So 
I would say my advice is like to just, you know, study. You really have to, this, this, is, a, this is a business, you know? And there's the show part, and I can take care of the show, you know? Like, I'll entertain, and I'll say what I need to say, and I'll, you know, do what I need to do. But you also need to understand um, the business side and how things work in terms of, you know, casting and um, shows getting produced and all this kind of thing, you know what I mean? So it's, it's really... Um, you really got to be smart, you know, mm -hmm. so apply yourself. So that's what I would say. Definitely. That. I yeah. get that. I yeah. get that. Well, <laughs> David, thank you so much for awesome. being thank here. Thank you for having me. And then, so my people, you heard his advice. So he's saying that you should be very smart, okay? It's called show business. So even though you may be really great at the show part, you also got to be very smart on the business part. All right? <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> ah, show business. Show business. Yeah, because yeah. I think a lot of people are the show. Business.